Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to part two of the audio behind the scenes for Starfall. As with last time, if you haven't seen the animation, check out the link in the description as there'll be some spoilers and none of this will make any sense if you haven't seen it. Um, so yeah, this time we're talking about sound design. Um, there's a number of custom sounds that I made for various big set pieces and character weapons and things like that in the animation. So we'll take a look at some of the more custom, more interesting ones. This one's going to be a little more casual than the music behind the scenes. Um, I, I don't have a script written or anything. Uh, I'm just going to be pulling up some of the sounds. Maybe we'll look at some layers. I'll talk about what samples or synthesizers went into making them. And uh, hopefully you uh, learn something or just find it generally interesting. So let's uh, jump on in. We'll be breaking things down by category. This is also how I worked on the sound where I would just take a blanket category of sounds, do all of those sounds for the whole animation, and then move on to the next one. Um, so that's how we'll look at them in the behind the scenes as well. The first one is ships and ship guns. So the first thing we'll be looking at is the sound design for the Atlas. This is kind of the main ship that we see on screen throughout the animation. It's the main character's ship, obviously, so it needs some signature sounds, something recognizable. And for this, I kind of approached it in three separate layers. One of them is a kind of explosion layer that plays usually right at the beginning of um, like a flyby of the camera or some kind of thruster burn. The next is some recordings of real jets and real engines. Um, I think there's some prop plane recordings in here, um, but it's mostly like distant recordings of jets. And then the third layer is the actual thruster burning sound and a little bit of the kind of ignition of them at the beginning. And that layer is actually made entirely of me just blowing air into a microphone and like having it distort and then adding some more distortion after the fact and filtering an EQ. Um, and turns out that gets you pretty close to what actual recordings of rockets sound like. Um, so these are pretty funny without effects. So I'll show them with no processing and then I'll show them with all the effects. Another signature sound for the Atlas is the landing gear. And this is a little bit more standard. It's mostly just made up of real recordings of various big clunky industrial elements. Of course, there's also the Atlas crash landing near the end of the animation. This sound is broken up into three distinct layers as well. There's the initial explosions layer of just kind of the actual impact of the crash. There's also a metals layer where I've got some, some groaning metal sounds and this is meant to be just the sound of the ship sort of shaking apart as it, as it crashes. And then of course there's also the dirt and, and kind of debris layers as it skids across the ground. Another noteworthy ship sound is the sound of the gun on the Strider ship near the beginning. Um, during this whole chase scene, it fires a few projectiles, um, and that sound is made mainly of two distinct layers. Um, one is the lasers layer, I'm calling it, which is just the actual sound of the gun. And then the other layer is a little bit less diegetic and more like for dramatic effect, which is the sound of the projectile moving. And that's made of some fireball sounds. And then there's also some creature sounds or like animal sounds layered in. Um, I think it's one of them is a lion. I think the other one is a tiger. <laughs> 
So I did design a signature sound for the Saimari ship, but unfortunately we had to cut it. It was just too much in that section, but um, I'll, I'll show it off in the behind the scenes just, just for fun. Okay, so the next category is large set pieces. We'll take a look at the warp gate first. This is probably the biggest set piece in the whole animation. And it has quite a few layers to it. The first one is this little activation layer as it's kind of getting ready to start spooling up. Then we have two distinct synth layers. The first one is for the actual like energy charging sound. Like it's, there's actual kind of power moving through it and it's it's actually charging up its main kind of energy source. The other one comes in a little later and it's more for the little particles that start to form as the warp gate gets to its final charging state. Then we also have some, just some samples layered in, just some design sounds. And then of course there's the firing layer. And this is made up of some kick drums that were processed a whole bunch. Up next of course is the warp speed as the Atlas is going through this like hyperspace warp tunnel thing. Um, initially we had some temp sounds in here um, and we used the portal sound from Songs of War. If you guys know Songs of War, um, it's another BPS animation. Um, so when I went to make the actual sound that's in the animation, I drew a lot of ideas from that. So there's these kind of wind whipping sounds, some kind of sparkly, like kind of magic sounds, as well as a whole bunch of bullet flybys that I'm just playing every like second or so, just so you get the sense that there's you know, energy and stuff whipping by the Atlas as it goes through this, this hyperspeed super fast. Another big set piece is the platform, the ship landing platform at the geothermal station, which of course explodes. Um, there's a as you would imagine, there's a big explosions layer as it breaks off from its attachment. But there's also some metal groans layered in there just so you get a sense of like the size and scale of this thing. There's also the rail gun that appears at the end of the animation at the Arcturan homeworld. Like a lot of the sounds in here, there's a layer of recorded sounds that are processed a bunch. In this case, it's like some kind of mechanical, just large components that are all spooling up. Uh, and then there's also a synth kind of charging layer. Probably the most consequential set piece in the whole animation is the EMP that Kira sets off at the end after betraying Owen. This has quite a long period where it's charging up, so the time between her activating it and starting the charge up and it actually firing is quite long. This tends to be quite difficult in sound design to get a sustained charging sound that is interesting all the way through. Luckily, it's actually not really on screen for most of this, so um, you don't hear most of the charge, but I did make a, a full charging sound so that at the beginning when you hear it start rising in pitch, when you hear it again near the end, it's risen in pitch the amount that you would expect for the rate of, of pitch increase, if that makes sense. Mostly this charge up is synthesized. When it actually fires, uh, there is a synthesized layer, but there's also um, 
kind of some explosion layers um, as well as of course the actual like electric zapping kind of sound because it's this EMP and a lot of the effects are like electrical. Next up is Kira sound design. Kira has a lot of little special abilities that we wanted to make sure all have a somewhat consistent sound design aesthetic. These sounds first make an appearance at the spaceport scene where Kira is surprising Owen with her little dagger floating and then of course she comes out a cloak. The dagger floating sound is pretty straightforward. I think it's mostly just synthesized. Um, we'll talk about that a little later when we talk about her ritual. Um, but the cloaking sound, also synthesized, but has this like lightning-y, electric-y layer similar to the EMP on top of it. Like I mentioned, Kira's ritual also contains a lot of these signature Kira sounds. Um, there's two main layers. The first is, this is becoming a theme, um, but the first is a synthesized layer. This also includes the sound of the daggers spinning around that because I wanted to match the rotation of them on screen, it was hard to do that with samples. So I just opted to have that synthesized so that I could exactly match the, the motion of them as they spin around her during the ritual. The other layer is mostly made of thunder sounds and electric sounds, kind of similar to the EMP from earlier. Kira's actual combat sounds um, are mostly made up of her daggers spinning around through the air. Um, she's also got this ability to recall them. So we wanted to have like a signature sound for when she uses that whatever magnetic energy she has to, to recall them or, or even throw them and have them fly through the air, you know, in a way that, that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, that sound I think is entirely synthesized. There's also a whole bunch of weapon sounds, um, whether it's the characters, handheld guns, or things like the mech. Um, a lot of these were synthesized. Some of them are not, some of them are samples. Um, and there's quite a few of them. So what I think I'll do is I'll just let them play. I'll show you some screenshots, uh, maybe some layers, and uh, you can just see how some of these sound just kind of on their own.
So the character of Chip has a lot of little movement sounds, little mechanical robot sounds. Being a little robot character, we felt like you kind of expect to have some little movement robot-y sounds with him, on top of the fact that he does a lot of emoting physically. So we felt like it would really help if those movements had an associated sound. The problem with that is that there's so much on-screen time for Chip that going through and manually placing all of these little sounds so that they sound varied and they match his emoting would have been really, really time consuming. And at this point in the production, we were a little crunched for time anyway. So what I opted to do is I took a sampler, in this case, Contact. Um, I'm not sure if this could have really, really been done in any other sampler. So I, I took a empty Contact patch and I loaded in a whole bunch of different little mechanical sounds, little servo sounds, and I mapped them across the MIDI keyboard. Uh, and then I also mat, uh, mapped the pitch of them to a little slider on the MIDI keyboard. So what that allowed me to do is just hit play on a scene and just watch Chip's little movement and then hit the record, hit play on the scene and just play in by pressing notes on the keyboard exactly the motions that Chip is making and it would play the kind of corresponding sounds. I also had volume mapped to velocity. So in all of his little movements, I could hit the keys a little harder or a little softer, depending on how much he moved, um, moving the, the, like I said, the pitch um, of the sounds around just to get variation. Um, because like I said, there's so much on-screen time of him moving. And this actually turned out to be a pretty good solution and saved us a ton of time during production. Um, so I'll, I'll show off some of that and maybe I'll show some screenshots of the, of the actual contact patch as well. Okay, so that is it for the sound design behind the scenes. Thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did either of those things, don't forget to hit subscribe because as I said with the music one, in future projects, I'd like to do this more. Uh, so yeah, with that said, I will see you in the next one and thanks for watching.